Hi, welcome to Brand New Brand. I'm Michael Worthington, Graphic Design Faculty at California Institute of the Arts, and this is the capstone project for the specialization in graphic design. What we're going to do with this project is try and figure out a vehicle for you to take all of the knowledge that you've learned in this specialization and put it all into one project, and that project's going to be a branding project. Now it's quite a complicated project, there's a lot of moving parts to it, but I'm going to walk you through it piece by piece so that you have a model to work with when you come to make your own brand. In a lot of ways, branding is the intersection between graphic design and marketing. And what that means is, it's a way to take something that doesn't necessarily have a visual form or, or a visual identity and to give it that visuality. And that's going to make it immediately recognizable. I'm willing to bet that when you look at this list of companies and products, it's pretty hard for you to look at them and not imagine their logo types. It's hard to look at Nike without thinking about its mark, the swoosh, and the same for other companies as well. You can't imagine Coca-Cola without seeing its signature typographic form or its red and white colors, or Adidas and its geometric typography and three stripes. And the same goes for all of these companies. They have strong visual identities. They're much, much stronger than just the words themselves. We're used to associating a graphic mark or a logo type with these companies. For this project, we're not really going to look so much at the marketing and strategy of branding and identity. We're really going to try and focus on the graphic design part of it. So we're going to be looking at typographic form and color and shape and imagery and all of the things that we've looked at throughout this specialization. Most identities comprise of a word mark or logo type. And these two terms are synonymous. And what they basically mean is the name of the company or client that's been treated typographically in a very distinct way. More often than not, this means tweaking the letter forms. So they might actually change from an existing form that could be an existing typeface and be much more customized. And part of that customization really involves looking at the letter forms in the particular name of your company. So for instance, here we're looking at the word logo type, and we're changing it bit by bit to try and make the letters more distinct. We might look at spacing, for instance. We might look at ligatures or scale and position of letter forms. And we might tweak the shapes of some of the letter forms themselves. But all of these things are in the context of this particular form, this particular word. So it's less about using a typeface that exists already and much more about customizing letter forms. And those letter forms, their only job is to look distinctive and to operate with the particular set of letter forms that they're working with. In other words, the name of your company. A brand is made up of many different component parts, a logo type being one of them and color being another. Brands quite often have a corporate color or colors, a distinct color that's hand-picked for that particular company to work together with the logo type to form a strong and memorable visual identity. As well as the logo type and color, there's often a mark or icon that goes with that particular company and that particular logo type. Sometimes that can be an abstract mark and sometimes it's a pictorial mark. Quite often, the logo type and the mark work together. They sit together in a lockup or they can act independently. If you think of something like Nike, for instance, the swoosh is the mark and the logo type is the actual word Nike in a couple of different typefaces. If you think about a company like Apple, for instance, it has a very distinct and recognizable mark, much more powerful than its logo type. But these are all parts of a much larger kit. And this is what we're going to do with this project. We're going to help you to develop this kit of parts and pull them all together. And once you get them all together, You'll have a logo type, and you'll have a mark, and a color palette, and a strategy, and you'll build a relationship between all these elements so that they can sit together. It could work in a flexible system or a very straightforward direct system, but they'll become components that'll help give your brand a clear and precise and distinct voice. One of the reasons we're looking at identity in graphic design is because it's an area that's increasingly growing. It seems that everyone these days has a logo type or a company that needs a logo type. And I think this is going to increasingly happen more and more as everybody needs a visual identity online and in digital media. So even the smallest company is going to need visibility and a logo type. But at some point, we're going to reach the point where every individual needs to have a logo type just for themselves. But for now, 
what we're going to work on is a brand development guide. Well, what this isn't is an identity manual, which is a set of instructions how to use a brand. Our brand development guide is really going to show us developing our different pieces of process, our working process, and we're going to put them together in this guide. So it's going to be a container for all of your process as well as culminating in all of your finished graphic design pieces that represent your identity. So you'll get to show a walkthrough of your process as well as the final results of that process as well.